Yo guys, what is going on, Blossoms back? Welcome back to another episode of Tough Drives, another episode about the PL22 drops. This is every single car that we have seen so far teased uh, before the update is upon us. So real quick, I'm gonna turn the camera off and let's get into today's video. All right, let's get started, y'all. So I comprised everything that I could find, uh, starting from the commons all the way to the legendary. So far, we have seen seven commons. Uh, whether it's been teased from Hutch, other creators, or myself. And as you can see over here, we've got things like the Buick Wildcat, the Chevrolet Corvair, uh, the Chrysler Thunderbolt, no, no, and the Dodge A110, uh, A100, sorry. Uh, and honestly, the ones that I'm super interested for the most, or super excited for the most, gotta be these two over here. The Chevrolet Corvair Monza and the Cadillac El Dorado. Now, both of them don't really have statistics that, you know, kind of blow anyone's mind out of the, the water, but like, I just really like these kind of classic cars. The Corvair is beautiful, and I would love to see different versions of it in the game. Uh, and the El Dorado is really cool as well. I mean, I, I gotta be honest, man. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm really annoyed that Hutch likes to select like black and white photos for older cars. I get it, you know, it's it's a representation of where it came from. It, it, was, it was a car from decades past, but like, I'm sure that they can get photos that are, you know, more crisp, you know, with color, with more clarity. Um, you know, I'm sure that they're, they're present day photos of the Eldorado, just because the Eldorado is, is an old car, doesn't mean every single photo about it has to be from the 50s. It doesn't make any sense. But yeah, it's a really beautiful car, and I just feel like they could have chosen a better photo for what is a really nice car. Obviously, we have the uh, thumbnail car, uh, or the flagship car of the entire update, the Buick Bolero. Look at that. I mean, dude, that doesn't even look like an, an actual photo. It looks like a painting of a Buick Bolero. Uh, some other uncommons that we've seen over here, the ones that I'm super excited for the most would be the Chevrolet XP897 GT, which was uh, teased by Andrew. Android fanatic. Uh, also, there was a GMC S15 Jimny or Jimmy, sorry, that is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have that Dodge Neon, which a lot of people are just saying it's actually a rebadge uh, Fiat Tipo, which yes, you would be correct. It, it actually is a Fiat Tipo. I, I initially thought that it looked and reminded me of a Dodge Dart because they didn't rip out the, the grill from the Dodge Dart and slapped it on the Tipo. Yeah, it's a, it's a mix of both. <laughs> That's what the Dodge Neon is. Oh, Mexico. Uh, oh, wait. Did I even, oh, I think I forgot. Okay, I will talk about Mexico in a bit. I think I made a doo-doo later on in the video. Uh, and some of the rares over here, um, I think a lot of people were saying that, oh my God, are these two cars gonna shake up the rare meta? They look like Cadillac ELRs, don't they? The Chevrolet Volt and the Buick, I don't even know what that is, the Veil Light 5 or whatever it is. Yeah, they look pretty decent for rares. 84 handling when you max them out, uh, max them out front wheel drive standard tires. Um, we don't know if it's medium ground clearance or low ground clearance. The uh, Cadillac ELR is low ground ground clearance these cars kind of share the same chassis so it'll be interesting to see if this ends up being low or medium if it's medium i would assume it's pretty good um but anyway before we get back into the better cars i want to give a shout out to everyone that i kind of got the cars from as well so obviously uh hutch they gave out uh you know exclusive cars not only to me but also to android uh vg and a lot of top drive so you know go check them out if you want to uh to see some of the cars uh that they showcased uh anyway moving on to the supers and the ultra ears these were the ones that i could find uh, the Chevrolet Colorado, the Buick LaCrosse Super. Now, this one we talked about a little bit already, like how, how I said that it shared the same engine as the Pontiac uh, GTP, or is it GXP, one or the other, um, which is capable. I'm getting a 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds, but I think since that's a, l a lot heavier of a car, uh, then, you know, 6.2 is probably accurate. One thing to, to take note is that there are a lot of all surface tire cars in this update. There are a lot of all surface tire cars in that update, and that might be a bad thing for many people because all surface tire cars are not well represented in the game. Uh, usually in a situation where you need to use all surface tires, you can also use off-road tires and off-road tires are always going to be better. So uh, as you can see, uh, from what I could find, there are about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it was seven because these were all rare. Right? Yeah, so there are seven super rares uh, that have been teased. And the crazy thing is uh, most of them are either all surface or off-road. So one, two, three, four, five. Five out of seven are all surface or off-road, the other two being standard. So as far as I'm concerned, I have not seen a single performance tire uh, <laughs> American overdrive car. Now, moving on to the ultra rears. Again, not 
much that I'm super excited for. The Buick Avista is a really interesting photo. It looks like it's two cars. Uh, that like kind of merged into one. Um, I don't know why the grill looks different, right? Like half of the grill and, and the other half of this photo, it just looks a little bit, I guess it's just the lighting with the shading. Like one side is a really saturated blue and the other side of the car is like a really faded blue. It really looks like two different cars merged into one. Um, so that's a pretty interesting photo. I gotta say though, I mean, it doesn't look too bad, right? 90 handling, I think about 4.2 of a 0 to 60 when you max it out, 4.290. Don't know what the MRA of that's gonna be. And a lot of all service tower cars, man. We've got the Buick Enclave, um, the Ram Rampage uh, from Brazil, and we even have the Cadillac XT6. But that car looks pretty good, as I mentioned in the past. That's a car that's capable of getting 84 handling uh, if you max it out, which is pretty decent for an RQ60. I'm also looking forward to the Ram 1500 Warlock uh, because that has off-road tires. And it begs the question, the current Warlock in the game right now, which I believe came out in Pacific Coast Highway, um, that has all surface tires in the game now. Will it change to off-road tires as well? That is something that I'm curious about. Dodge Hornet is here as well. We talked about that in yesterday's video. Then we move on to the Epics, and really, I would say that the two main gems here are the Camaro SSX, as well as the Corvette Z06. Uh, emphasis on the Corvette, but we'll talk about that later. GMC Hummer looks pretty good as well, and that Cadillac CT5V, yeah, that's a good looking one, I'll be honest. Uh, last but not least, on the upper echelon of stuff, we have the Buick Inspire. Uh, or Inspire. We have the Chevrolet Borrego, the Chevrolet Corvette C8R. I know why it, why it's gonna be salivating at that, dude. It's insane. Oh man, I really wish that Wyatt actually had some cards uh, to showcase to you guys, but I don't think he was selected by Hodge to do so, which is a bit sad because like, that's his entire shtick, you know? His entire YouTube channel is called uh, Corvette Lover of Drives. Uh, and then moving on to the rest of the collection with the Chevrolet CRV uh, 3 the Chevrolet Corvette IMSA. Again, dude, could have gone for a way better photo on this. This this just looks like, th this photo looks like, you know, an x-ray, you know, like if, like that one guy, what was, what was the thing, like Giselle, what was the thing that we talked about? Like the guy, like stuffed a Buzz Lightyear up his ass and like there was like an x-ray of it. That's what this photo reminds me of, you know? It, it reminds me of an x-ray. It's, it's weird like that. <laughs> Uh, the Corvette Z06 and a couple other legendaries that we'll talk about as well. So, um, one really interesting thing that I noticed from this update is that although it's called American Overdrive, there are multiple countries represented here. And this is why earlier on, I, I kind of just remembered, oh, wait a minute, I forgot about Mexico. Uh, so we have Brazil, right? Brazil, uh, I think this is the first time Brazil's gonna, oh, no, not the first time, not the first time. Brazil's already in the game. I think they have a couple like Fords or something like that. Uh, but the Ram Rampage, so that's pretty cool. Uh, obviously we have American cars for American Overdrive. We have the Chevrolet SS represented Australia, so Australia's getting some cars, and the Buick XL is actually representing China. So <laughs> there you go China, Australia, Brazil, the US, and Mexico. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Sorry about Mexico. Sorry, Mexicans. Um, but yeah, gotta shout out to everyone. Shout out if you know the cities behind. Like, for example, I got Seattle for the US, I got Rio for Brazil. <laughs> you see what I did there? All right, anyway, moving on to the um, epic. So, um, I want to talk about some pretty interesting things that I've learned uh, now that I got the chance to see all the new cars to together. Shout out to uh, Iris, Iris Van Duren. He pointed out yesterday that the Hummer not only had a super low zero to 60, it has the lowest zero to 60 of any epic in the game. I did not know that. Um, and that's that's crazy. So uh, next to the Hummer, I've selected the Caterham CSR, the AC Cobra, and the Dodge Challenger. Those three cars are the top three cars in the game right now for epics and below with the lowest zero to 60s. As you can see, it's 3-1-3-2-3-2. So the Hummer is going to be the lowest zero to 60 epic in the entire game. That is ridiculous. Although it might have zero MRA, it should be able to make a significant impact on the quarter mile and the hill climb. Now, moving on to the next thing I want to talk about is the Chevrolet Corvette IMSA GTO C4. Uh, now, I want to compare this to some direct rivals. I would say the Mazda 757 uh, is probably the closest to compete to the Corvette. Um, the Mazda 757, 3.395 compared to the Chevrolet Corvette's 3.292. Now, here's the crazy thing. The Corvette handles significantly less, right? 92 compared to the Mazda's uh, 95, but it's one RQ higher. 
right? So, and also the 757 has 100 MRI. So I, I think, honestly, if everything is coherent, I would assume looking at its RQ and judging it by cars that are already in the game that are similar to it, I would say that the MRI on the Corvette IMSA is probably going to be in the hundreds too. Maybe even more than a hundred, right? Uh, compared it to the Porsche 936, the Porsche 936 3.092, one RQ higher, a higher top speed of an MRI of 99. And last but not least, the Lancia LC1 Spider 3.094 with an MRI count of 96. I want to say that the Corvette is going to land between that 100 mark is going to be a fantastic 80s American legendary. Uh, another fantastic American legendary is going to be the Chevrolet Corvette C8R. Uh, again, like I said, uh, Wyatt is going to be loving this. Uh, 3.198, I would say that his direct competitor is probably going to be the McLaren 720S GT3 or the Renault Sport RS01. MRA numbers are also annotated with all the cars. McLaren at 102, Renault Sport at 89, and the Mazda Fury at 99 MRI. I would assume that the Corvette C8R is around the high 90s, I would say 38, uh, 3198 compared to the Renault Sports 3197 and 89. It'll be pretty interesting to see. I mean, it might actually be like a high 80s as well, depending if it wants to be slightly better or slightly worse compared to the Renault RS01. Okay, now moving on to another legendary that I want to talk about is the Chevrolet Corvette Z06. I genuinely think that this thing's going to have no MRA at all. Uh, seriously, uh, for an RQ86 car, 2.791, there are two ways that this can turn out. Okay, so look at it compared directly to the McLaren GT. It's like on paper, it's better than the McLaren GT. Uh, it handles two more, like it has two handling points higher than the McLaren GT, and it has a lower 0 to 60. The McLaren GT is 86 in MRA, 86 in RQ. The Chevrolet Corvette, I mean, it's got to be less than 86, man. It's got to be less than 86. Another way is the Chevrolet Corvette actually uh, has about 86 to 90 MRA, and the McLaren GT is actually going to go down to RQ85. Uh, in the update. So that's the other option. So option A is either the McLaren GT stays as an 86 and the Chevrolet Corvette just turns out to have no MRA, or it does have decent MRA and the McLaren GT just goes down in rank. Because right now, as you can see it, uh, as far as RQ goes, um, the Z06 seems closer of a competitor to the RQ87s like the McLaren 650S Coupe and the W Motors like in Hypersport that you see towards the left. So that's going to be a pretty interesting outcome for how this Corvette is going to traverse its way into the game. Okay, now moving on to the next legendary, the Cadillac CTS V Sedan. Dan race car. This was introduced by Android Fanatic just less than 24 hours ago. Uh, this one hits close to home because I love sedans. Um, and I, you know, obviously I drive a sedan myself and uh, yeah, I just love this niche. So I would love to get this. I'm not really lucky with like sedan slick tire cars in the game. I don't own an Audi A5 DTM or a Mazda 6 Sky Active D, which I would consider to be the main competitors towards the Cadillac CTS-V. 3.493 compared to the Sky Active 3.794, but that is 97 MRA, but two RQ lighter or lower. And of course with the Audi A5, which is four or RQ higher at 3.4. 95 with 108 MRA. I gotta say, 0 to 60 in the CTSV, relatively low. I know, crazy thing is the uh, Hummer. Yeah, that, that Hummer has a lower 0 to 60 in every car that you see over here. Electric cars are, are, are breaking the meta. Uh, the only reason why I put the Lotus Amira GT4 in here is because it was the only other RQ85 slick tire rear wheel drive car that I could find. So I just wanted to go for a comparison. And as you can see, 34359693. If we don't know what the MR and the CTS, uh, CTSV sedan race car is gonna be. Um, but we can assume that it will probably be in between 80 to 90, something around that range. If it's 100, that's even better. Uh, but anyway, why is the Legendary so significant and why am I so excited? Or why are the Legendary so significant and why am I so excited? Um, now, what I love about this update, and I'm telling you this already, I'm already loving this update, loving, loving, loving this update, is because it brings, you know, justice to the United States of America. And I freaking love that. It's about damn time. Now, I know some people are gonna be annoyed, like, oh my God, it's another American update. And I understand your frustration with that, <clears throat> birdie. Um, but like, what I like about this update and what makes this American update different from all the other American updates that we've had is that it actually doesn't do us dirty. Um, every single American update that we've had before, Frontier, American Dream, Pacific Coast Highway, they all follow the same blueprint. Yeah, they brought a lot of cars, but the legendaries were kind of trash.
you know? Um, Pacific Coast Highway didn't bring in the legendaries that you could unpack. Or besides, no, 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 Rizvani Beast was a world expert, right? Uh, and then like American Frontier only brought what? The Viper TA? Uh, the Viper ACR, uh, Acker DNX, you know, these are all under 84. American Dream brought like the Viper ACR, uh, Galaxy, was it Galaxy 16? No, maybe not, no, Galaxy 16 was an OG, I think. Um, and then obviously World Expo brought the Hennessy Venom GT and that wasn't even a dedicated American update, right? So right now in the game, in terms of cards that you can unpack that are American legendaries, only one of them is 90 plus. Everything is either 85, 84 or below. Um, I would say that in terms of legendary pool, uh, the Americans kind of have it one of the worst in the entire game. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Uh, seriously, like the Swedish, they have it better. Uh, you can even argue that the South Koreans might have it better. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about time because now with this new update, look at that. We have so much more variety given that every single legendary that we have seen is a non-prize and is packable that brings so much more life into the american premium pack the american carbon fiber just 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 the entire country it gives it a little bit more um not versatility it gives it a little bit more respect honestly um so yeah i'm really really happy uh you know like the corvette is gonna be one of probably a few 90 plus american legendaries that you can hopefully unpack we've got a couple higher tier um 80s like the charger daytona and the corvette um so yeah i'm, I'm genuinely excited and before we end off we've got two more epics to showcase to you we got the chevrolet corvette zu 6x 3.690 um i can't wait to see the mra on that because we've got the mra we've got 3590 in both the zl11 le and the vantage 92 and 86 um, if the Corvette has a weaker 0 to 60, but remains the same RQ as the ZL1 and the Vantage, I would assume that the Corvette has probably better MRA. Guessing maybe 95. That's going to be my guess in the Corvette. Maybe 90, 94, 95. Um, and then with the Asimar and V12 Vantage RS at 89. Um, now, that's a pretty interesting one because it has the same exact stats as the Corvette 3690. Uh, even has higher top speed. Uh, but the fact that the Corvette has uh, a higher RQ compared to the Vantage probably signifies that the Corvette probably has more than 89 MRI. So I'm really looking forward to this car. Uh, that is going to be a good looking one to have. And last but not least, I'm really, really, really excited for this. The Cadillac CT5V medium ground clearance. There are not a lot of medium ground clearance performance tire American cars that you can choose from. Everyone kind of just gravitates towards the ATS-V. Uh, so the CT5, CT5V, I mean, obviously isn't going to beat the ATS, but it's going to be a nice, you know, RQ saver for American collectors, um, you know, for the Epic Rex. So that's also pretty nice. It's basically going to be the American version of the M3 CSL. I don't like lower RQ epics, but one thing that I've always been consistent about is I've always loved the M3 CSL. I always saw the value in that car. And you're getting the same exact stats in the Cadillac CT5, which gets me so freaking excited. 4.787, uh, which is crazy that the M3 CSL that came out over 20 years ago uh, remains to have the same stats. So that's pretty cool as well. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. So those are all the epics and the legendaries that I'm most super excited for. Uh, I'm genuinely, genuinely, genuinely excited for this update. Uh, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait um, to, uh, to, to to just play the game, you know, open packs and, and upgrade cars once again. It's going to be a good time. Uh, the days of ENW is finally over and I'm all for it. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to stay safe. Wash your hands and blossom out. Peace. Bro, this song just makes me so happy. <laughs> me too. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jet box back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly, got a jet box back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies, they so fine. Sit back, relax in my Bonneville Pontiac. Hold tight all night, cruise to Jacksonville.